evening. I'm going now to speak about uh, gender-based violence. That is the topic of this webinar, where the guests are Pino Rotta, Eva Gerace, Maria Laura Falduto, Giancarlo Calcolari, Ivan Formica. I am Riccardo Cristiano and I am the director of the Libera TV. We are going to speak about the causes and prevention uh, and the law and the protection of um, uh, violence, uh, of gender-based violence. And I here refer not only uh, violence against women and children, but also against the weakest uh, part of the society. For example, today, um, another mm, important part of the society, uh, which is um, mm, targeted by this sort of gender violence, is the community LGBT. And it uh, doesn't mm, only mean uh, a sort of physical violence, but even of verbal violence. And so uh, it creates uh, mm, a strong um, and uh, a very difficult uh, reaction and, and um, create instability and creates also um, an emotional um, an emotional stress um, so we must act and find out a solution discuss and try to prevent uh, it's up now to Pinorota to open to ice break to, uh, to open uh, to break the ice of course and um, I thank him for uh, having organized this important webinar. And um, now uh, it's up to him, the sociologist and uh, the director of Helios magazine, um, who is going to speak and to introduce the topic. Thank you. I am Pino Rotta. I am a sociologist and the director of Helios magazine. And I thank Riccardo Cristiano for uh, having accepted my invitation to take part in this, in this important meeting. Um, my speech um, wants to be a sort of ice-breaking phase. And... Um, Mm, I have been uh, knowing Riccardo Cristiano for more than 10 years and uh, now we have to mm, limit our meetings because of this particular situation of lockdown and so distance is compulsory for us. And the topic uh, that I'm going to introduce uh, is uh, related to feminicide in a, a time span of two years um, between 2019-2020 and um, the ratio between these two, uh, these two years of reference is um, up to uh, um, is alarming, the ratio is alarming uh, because we have here um, uh, rising of up to 80%. Um, here I will show some slides. In this slide, uh, there are some um, the data of reference of these two years. And um, here uh, we can see that uh, the uh, growing of uh, the line here growing is very alarming uh, because we have uh, recorded about uh, 
85 mothers in 2019 and 81 almost the same in 2020 and so uh, during lockdown in particular we have that men are the killers so they commit commit uh, first of all homicide and then a suicide and um, the um, so the the target of the rage of the homicide instinct uh, um, is uh, uh, the woman particular the woman and even the children and uh, even the other um, weaker um, part the weaker part of the population and uh, for example uh, homosexuals and um, similar and the killers the mothers uh, belong to the uh, known associates, belong to the same family members sometimes, and or, uh, they are acquaintances. And um, uh, most of the most of the uh, of the crimes of this kind of feminicides um, take place in northern Italy. Um, uh, in fact, in northern Italy, we can record, as you can see in this infographic, 50% of the uh, feminicides and uh, fewer feminicides in the center and southern Italy. And uh, a, another part um, interested in this evidence is the uh, foreigner community. In particular, the North Arabic uh, community, the Arabic community, in which um, we can record uh, that uh, about 14 uh, women were killed in 2020, and the, the previous year, in the 2019, 23 women were killed. Uh, most of the time, the uh, mothers um, decide to uh, suicide, to commit suicide, and um, the reason, the reasons related to, to this uh, uh, terrible uh, and uh, skyrocketing, because it's raising um, uh, event, um, are related, the causes are related to, to uh, first of all, the economic crisis that waits on the effects, of course, caused in some particular people. Um, this waits on uh, all these weights on the society by provoking a sort of a fall of the sense of a life and a fall of the identity that I want to uh, underline it is the social, the fall of the social identity. Um, and um, one of the effects uh, of the uh, economic crisis uh, is the recession. The recession is related to the economic depression, to the social depression that um, provoke um, a crisis, a crisis uh, towards the future. All this was announced by uh, a series of protests that um, have been um, so frequent in these recent months of lockdown. We have assisted on television, social media, everywhere to street manifest, to street demonstrations, and all these provoke uh, a sort of a rage, stressful frustration, and rage 
that uh, was translated into crimes, into killings, and the victims were the weakest uh, part of the society, above all children, women, homosexual. So, um, uh, women are in front of a, um, a gap, uh, in front of a, um, a choice, a challenging choice. Sometimes they have to choose if denouncing, uh, so in uh, reporting against the, the man who usually beats them or to uh, drop the charges. Um, and sometimes they have to drop, withdraw the complaint because of the lack of uh, uh, economic of economic support because they don't work. Women sometimes don't work, and um, this is why they choose not to continue with the uh, report against the the man, the partner. Um, and uh, to withdraw the complaint because of a lack of a real assistance by the society. And um, what we, we should do from now on, uh, as we have planned in the past, um, should be to support these women and so to help them um, be confident, to trustful uh, in the the social support and to face uh, the situation in a, a more um, uh, in a less stressful way and uh, with more confidence. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution and uh, your detailed report. And now it's up to Eva Gerage. She is a psychoanalyst and uh, the representative of the psychoanalytical uh, circle, Caribbean circle, and she is professor at the University of Messina um, and a group analyst. She's going to speak uh, now about this topic. Mm. Thank you. I am Eva Gerace. And um, I would like to introduce my topic um, by using a quotation as a title. The quotation is uh, taken from uh, the Nobel Prize Derek Walcott um, and uh, in uh, the poem uh, titled Love After Love. In uh, this uh, uh, poem, there is a line that um, expresses an idea, the idea that I use as a title, that is to peel the skin in front of the mirror. What does it mean? At first, this title is a metaphorical title, and this title uh, uh, I have chosen this title uh, as a replacement of another one that I had chose previously, that was for photos, for pictures. But I uh, opted for this. Why? Because of the verb to peel. Peel means uh, lots of things, it has several meanings and synonyms it means gather by, get away with, to cope with, to succeed in. And so it's something positive because in front of the mirror we can peel our skin, our skin and find out what we are, we really are. And if it doesn't happen, uh, so, what, what are the consequences? In order to answer this question, 
uh, rhetoric question. Um, I wanted to uh, refer to prematurity, to, to the, 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 the what happens after the gestational age. So prematurity uh, is a period in of, of age, yes, in which um, we we can take into consideration a baby newborn up to six months, up to six months, and we have to consider him as a fragmented body, um, and it's very important to even to understand, interpret uh, from a psychist point of view his drives and his messages. Um, obviously, if we compare a newborn uh, to a, a animal, um, a newborn animal, uh, of course, there are very uh, big differences, evident differences, because uh, a little lamb, a little dog, uh, a puppy is able to survive even if uh, the mother is absent so uh, he is able the, the it is able for example to uh, to walk to stand on his four legs and so on on the contrary uh, conversely a baby uh, without the presence of his mother isn't able to survive and so he will die because a mother is able to interpret and to understand each um, gesture, each movement of his little hands, if he cries, if he smiles, and so on. Because the baby shows his drives by uh, moving, by uh, so. Uh, moving his hands, his little hands, by crying and so on. And um, so the role of the mother is very important during this age, up to six months, because a mother has to need to mix the ingredients um, that uh, she receives from the gestures of uh, her baby and to uh, mix all the ingredients into this fragmented body in order to build uh, his eat, his ego. Because in this phase of non-differentiation, it is important that uh, a mother uh, creates uh, uh, the basis of subjectivity and of a differentiation among what between what is good what is bad and in particular um, in this garden of bliss i want to refer now to the previous title i um i had to, to give to this uh, uh, report uh, to my speech and uh, the title should have been four photos because I want, I'd like to start from the photos in order to introduce the concept of the uh, of how to um, control the excesses and how to build a subjectivity, a correct subjectivity in a, a baby. Uh, when I um, speak in front of my uh, students, I, I am more a professional in the sense that I use a technical language in this webinar. I want, um, I'd like to be more uh, sim simpler in uh, explaining what I mean. So, starting from the photos, the photos that um, are published and posted uh, in the social networks, for example, Instagram, Facebook. And I, I am terribly, terribly against 
the messages given by such photos. Some of them, some pics, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, show the image of a parents, a mother or a father who kiss on the lips, on the mouth, the children. And this is not a good message. This is a terrible message because you don't have to kiss your children on the lips but on the cheeks because uh, um, uh, the mouth uh, represent a sexual element and during this uh, period of maturity um, uh, of growth in which a baby um, uh, has to uh, develop his sphincter uh, control um, uh, it's very important and it's uh, very important, yes, to uh, to 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 be uh, uh, careful, to be careful, not to create uh, um, a, a sort of a crisis, a sort of a, a misunderstanding uh, in the um, in the in the baby. In fact, after six months, up to 18, 18 months, we have to be careful in understanding everything and the drives in our children. But then we have even to build uh, the the personality uh, without interfering in their growth. Um, I wanted to explain this concept by introducing the story, the case, the case study of a baby, a, a little girl who was five years old. And when um, she was up to five year, up to five years old, she was uh, um, obliged to, to uh, sleep in the same bedroom with uh, her parents because of uh, a rigid, a strict control over hair by her parents. And so every night she listened to uh, her parents' intercourse and so uh, she was uh, accustomed to listen to and to sometimes to see to watch them. Uh, while having uh, sexual intercourse and uh, so this caused a series of problems in the little baby in, in this girl uh, who uh, going to school in front of her schoolmates uh, used to mime to act out the sexual intercourse of uh, her parents and this caused a sort of a, a stressful reaction in a hair and so um, a, a real interest in, uh, in the teachers who thought that the baby uh, was raped, probably raped by uh, one of her parents. And for this reason, the parents were um, uh, denounced. Uh, but uh, of course, there was no rape. It was only uh, a, a sort of acting out what she uh, had previously and uh, unconsciously uh, listened to and looked at. Uh, in the bedroom of her parents. One of my colleagues, in fact, was able to heal the little baby and so uh, to avoid this stressful effect on her in, a, um, in her future uh, growing um, uh, steps. And so uh, she was able to uh, overcome uh, this is a sort of a problem thanks to a therapy in which she was asked to um, build a house as uh, if she were an architect and she, she was a sort of a genius because she was able to build up 
uh, a new house in which there were two different bedrooms and a bathroom far from the bedrooms and so uh, she was able to create a new dimension in her mind and uh, in um, in uh, inside herself in which not all the members of the family lived in the same bedroom and slept over the on the same bed but uh, they had distinct bedrooms and everything was so um, more uh, uh, quiet uh, and so normal we can say um, this was uh, a good uh, approach but of course uh, uh, all this uh, provoked uh, so the, the nouns, uh, the, the parents were denounced, even if they didn't act in a negative way, in the sense they ignored the effects and they overprotected the, the little baby and they didn't mean to provoke this sort of a, um, a, a side effect in a hair. Um, in the consumer society in which we live, um, everything uh, of this kind may be considered, of course, negative. And I refer to the photos on the lips, for example, that um, are so evident today, uh, are negative models to follow. And the, um, in fact, they are a felony, they are crimes, uh, offenses. Um, what I want now uh, to, to quote uh, is uh, a sentence of another Nobel, Nobel Prize, Louis Gluck, uh, who uh, said uh, that uh, we have to look at the word uh, once and uh, so we can see our childhood all the rest is memory okay thank you okay i was the same following the speech uh, of the pino previously that we are living in a consumerist society that so imposes some rules. You must buy, for example, the latest model of a car. We have so a new form of addition, drug addition, but today is different. Is massive today. Pandemic fact upset all this pandemic is not a synonym of war it's far different from war because we are all involved it's a global question with unknown consequences and there is a sort of crime committed by the press and by Italian law, that is the lack of transmitted the means to be informed. So this is a crime, a felony. We shouldn't produce violence, but as Jose Saramago said and wrote, when you try to convince someone that what you think is truth, it's our truth, it's a lack of respect, it's a way to colonize the other. Jose Saramago wrote this sentence and I want now to quote it. I wrote a book. Violence against women 
is a daily news? And why are produced this effect of a refusal, of isolation? Not everything alters capitalism, but only those who want course not to follow the logic of psychoanalysis and we had to understand that the symptoms the unconsciousness and that this is similar to what poem poetry conveys as i have said speaking about the mirror no one is a feminicide or an aggressor or a ball, a mother. We have to grow up our children far from the logic of a patriarchalism. Everybody needs to build a new logic in order to avoid blackness and in Biella. In the next weekend, some men are so creating a demonstration by dressing red shoes in order to support uh, women victims of violence. We should accept the difference, and this is very important. People ask me why women. Some women don't possess economic economic basis and this part of psychism. Some women, for example, uh, continue to stay uh, with the, the women, with the men that beat them because of a, a lack of economic basis and. I wanted to quote uh, the, the, the story of a nun that fostered to tolerate, but sometimes a woman suffers with the body, but with the body enjoys. The, the problem is that the, the women don't possess the, the right tools to overcome this limited position, this submitted position. They don't know how. In a new book, Psychoanalysis and the Causes, I have worked starting from Artemisa Gentilets, uh, taken as a mode, she was raped and her father, instead of protecting her, left her aside. And then I tried to go to a Catholic school to see how feminists analyzed this uh, this matter and in this book what is uh, taken into consideration is uh, the fragility of this uh, woman and i say that we are able we are not able but we are involved in all this, we are responsible of all this, so everybody is responsible. Even in a psychoanalytical, uh, psychotic concern, we should help and not uh, so look at another side. Every every. Everybody should be protected, starting from the, the baby whose photo is taken and published, uh, to the baby 
who sleeps in the same bedroom as uh, of the her parents. So the book by Albinate is extraordinary, and I wanted to quote it to, to analyze the passage in which he says, "Why do male rape women? We live in a society of rape." Hostility, rape, are evoked in a sexual manifestation. Sex is a language. We must accept the lack of a complete, complete of a completeness. And not all should be addressed to accept precarity. Violence is a primary reaction in front of difference. Sorry, violence is a reaction in front of the difference. In front of strangeness, what is strange? And we can wonder why. Why this violence against women? Because they represent the difference for a man. They are different. In Brazil, a man represented that much masculism to so kills more than coronavirus. Machism kills more than coronavirus. Historically, when a person who has a broken bone is helped, so the person may be healed, and the disease so a support, a concrete support, a metaphorical support. Can you see what I wear? Okay, I wear this scarf. And it was uh, woven by uh, a woman, and I have decided to wear this white scarf because uh, it comes from the Caribbean. A Caribbean was made by a Caribbean woman, and uh, and she wrote, speaking about violence that the Caribbean woman next to Brazil uh, refers to this topic by saying that I am a fond of my Caribbean land and made indigenous women like me my spirit flies over the ocean trying to answer my questions about the difference with the Americans, about the difference in the human conditions with the other American female women, and why do we speak of different races of racism? Why do we give value to what we do with our hands in a different way? Thank you. Thank you, Eva Gerage, for your deep reflections in the first and in the second part by using poetical images. Of course, there is a lack of awareness of human subjectivity that everybody should take into consideration and transmit. We shouldn't be clones, but we should be subject uh, of our future. And let's continue this webinar. And uh, so 
it's up to Maria Laura Falduto, psychotherapist and vice responsible of the University of Messina professor and uh, responsible of our chat social center. Thank you, Eva. It's up to you, Maria Laura. Thank you, Ricardo. I'd like so. Okay. Maria Laura is going to speak. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Maria Laura. Okay. Now he's in the forefront. She thanks. I thank everybody. And sorry, having lost some precious time. And this evening we don't want to speak about violence, but we have to. And I want to continue Eva's speech by combining our different forces and the messages. And so my idea is to create network and speak not only about the effects of violence, but what we could do because it's very important to prevent and to know the uh, psychic uh, functioning. I thank Pino for having organized this meeting and the thought even of the topic and uh, of the succession of the guests of the speakers um, uh, we have to speak and continue to speak about uh, violence because it's uh, in the foreground of the T, uh, TV news it's something that uh, impacts everybody we can't uh, be silent in front of these terrible uh, and different forms of violence. And uh, since October, uh, 91 victims, we have recorded 91 victims. There is a helpline, 10.2. Um, there was a skyrocketing uh, growth of uh, such um, interventions asked by this helpline uh, of 71%. Uh, uh, is something that concerns all the system and, and it's a real problem I work in a supported medicine center and um, I face problems of this kind and basically women are obsessed by economic problems and um, there are evidences uh, linked to the violences that were uh, well documented and women in the lockdown during the first lockdown, were uh, facing important situations, isolation, uh, isolation that uh, caused serious problems. Um, and the, the first, the first isolate, isolation. Um, and the, so it all these created psychological effects, negative effects. The problem isolation in the solitude, but above all, the isolation of these women they are obliged to live uh, along with uh, uh, the, the rage of the uh, farmers that are dangerous. There are different types of uh, 
uh, of anguish, of afraid, persecutory and oppressive. Um, they don't know what uh, will happen to them. Some of the women uh, have had a lot of difficulties in communicating and in expressing their failure because of the physical space, the physical setting was lacking during lockdown. Um, I, I mean, uh, so the difficulty in uh, facing this emotional dissonance and uh, the lack power in order to express herself she couldn't there was an emotional discord and so she was a victim of the panic and of a sort of a confusion and uh, the i want to speak about a sort of a sore the lack of, uh, of word failure word that is inside the, the the body and becomes a symptom. So I speak of the blow that is uh, the image of the other that the other wants me to be and uh, me to have. And if we speak of image, and this is so the key word of my intervention, linked to uh, so to the fact of being afraid of being afraid. My title is this failure of word, and the theme of luck. Is so the meaning, the, the leading, the leading theme. And the Sartre in Et et le Neon quotes: "Most part of our work is devoted to uh, fill the holes." Um, in fact, psychotherapy. Uh, rotates around the theme of lack and that is uh, linked to drive to loneliness. Lack is a sort of deception of us, the idea of the deception of that. And so each uh, meeting of lack is a meeting of lack. This is a sort of a speech uh, linked to the exception of the gas that Freud quoted. When the other is not able to recognize the other and uh, he tries to, to uh, fill the holes, all this means that violence is uh, um, as of is of face is a surface problem. If we do not recognize lack, then mm, something is going to be wrong. So during this period, we don't have so our space, our scenting, our vital space. And when our vital space, the vital space of women is not accepted, this is a sort of a violence. And so there is a sense of possessing women, a woman. And according to this scenario, uh, there is a sort of a melting between a confusion between uh, myself and you and the other mm, melting together doesn't let uh, the other to be autonomous. Me too. I'd like to quote um, the Magda Dignan, a Finnish writer who speaks about love. I want to read a passage. 
because it interprets positively and critically this phenomenon as referred to the stage of the mirror, non-differentiation stage, uh, the fact that we don't recognize the other difference. So the author says, I love you so profoundly, you said. No one has loved like me. I have built a pyramid of love, you said. I put you on the pedestal, you said. This is the story, love story of the century, you said. And it will exist forever, you said. It was so difficult to sleep in the first 700 nights because I didn't understand how much you love your love. And the repetition of you said, you said, uh, is as if you didn't speak of yourself, of, but of the other, as there is a sort of speaking of about the other, is that there the meeting point with the other, or what the other images, things, realize, but there is a confusion in this sense, a confusion that can generate uh, losing uh, into the other as if even if you said that it was so difficult to believe in reality but in reality it's how you look at this love when it says that uh, uh, love is heterosexual, it doesn't mean that, that uh, it is addressed to the anatomy of the bodies, uh, to the gender, but is recognized the heteros, that it is the other, and recognize the difference um, in a heterosexual or homosexual uh, couple. Uh, this is very important. Uh, I try to conclude my bit by saying that violence is the starting point uh, because it has a language that is structured through a body and through the skin in our relations. So it's very important since the beginning of the first act to di dialogue, to speak because violence is the failure of the speech, of the word, so we should be the law of the word nobilitates the other, and so nobilitates the freedom of the other. Violence and the word of violence uh, lowers and reduces the other to be silent, to the silence. I, uh, a woman should say, I, I feel free to speak, to react, to give a vent to my passions, my drives. Hmm? And on the contrary, um, sometimes uh, um, a woman is in front of her solitude. And we should think of a principle of a reality um, in the sense that if I don't have everything all at once, if I don't uh, obtain what I want, then I can uh, so desire, wish something, even through deception. We live in a time rich of fragility, frailty, and so emptiness, so we should use the word, the strong ego, ego should be, it should be uh, taken into consideration. For example, if you want, you can resist to life, not to stand in Yes, 
these uh, sentences are important, but behind there is a strong history, there is a strong story, and we should work and continue working on the value of violence and how to face violence. So we should compare to different egos, strong and weak egos, in order to understand this concept. Okay, I saw what I wanted to say and conclude is to uh, uh, go against uh, the dynamics that exist today in order to prevent violence from the theory of the totality to the theory of the um, particularity thanks to uh, sexual education um, and in particular from a woman who is seen as an object to a woman that is seen as a projector in the a reactor. And so rebuild the idea of the woman as an object of a possession, of an enjoyment, of a pleasure, but as um, a builder of a idea of luck, a possibility to love. Thank you, Maria Laura Faldu, because she gave us a moment of reflection, in particular when she said not to stay restless and to act, and, and in particular in schools, we should uh, um, try to uh, educate uh, because some children uh, should uh, grow up by building their identity. The concept of luck uh, is very important because when we lack of something, we um, uh, look for something elsewhere and uh, this is uh, the concept of uh, not possessing but respecting the other thank you maria laura farduto for your intervention and uh, now it's up to professor ivan formiga psychotherapist and the professor at the university of messina Thank you, Riccardo. Thank you, Pidorotta, for having invited me. I'd like now to face the theme of the, the gender-based violence from a psychoanalytical perspective. And I will try to look at psychoanalysis trying to understand, to explain the main reasons why men are violent towards women. And uh, vice versa. And I will try to be uh, very synthetic because lots of words should be spent. Mm. But we have a few, time, few minutes. Uh, so mm, I'd like to introduce one of my thesis um, about this uh, concept. A thesis addressed to understand the dynamics and the reasons that push men to be violent against women. First of all, what is called uh, gives us a certain 
a sense of simple work is not known. So this is as verified as when we are in front of the map, our first reaction is to be anxious and so to be prey of a panic anguish. In order to uh, master this sense of a panic anguish, um, because it is related to feeling preferable to comprehensible, we when we don't know how to understand, uh, so in a reaction is some 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 adapt into a, a violent act. So the the woman stands for an enigmatic figure. This is so one of the reasons why a man doesn't understand the woman. The woman is a, is a, so a mystery, and even a woman towards another woman um, is um, so um, unable to understand her similar. For example, sometimes a man understands the nature of his orgasms, sexuality in a man uh, answers to specific laws. It's sufficient to, to stimulate the organ male, sexual male, uh, to uh, enjoy, um, but that's not the same for women. I remember that uh, a young patient uh, came to me, a bisexual girl, and sometimes she used to open a debate on the origin of her, orga of her orgasms. She didn't succeed in having a vaginal orgasm. And she asked if uh, a pure vaginal orgasm existed, uh, or if existed another orgasms, a clicked orgasm. And uh, he, um, I answered that there were uh, there are five orgasms: oral, vaginal, anal, uterine. And uh, G point, uh, so five orgasms. And uh, even uterine is uh, a strong orgasm. And she was uh, stupefied, she was so uh, strangely um, and, and doubtful because she didn't know that there were five orgasms. So women are a mystery. I can say that there are two different psyche, male and female. For example, a man who enters into a room where there is a party, um, a man will look at the uh, breast or On the contrary, a woman won't look at the man or the most handsome man. All the other, at all the other women, in order to uh, see who is the most beautiful, the most good. So, so. So the woman looks deeply at the other women 
at the wake up, at the shoes, the clothes, and so on. On the contrary, the men, men in general, um, will look not at the other men because uh, men were at all the same and wear a sort of a uniform and they are all the same. There is a principle in a man that uh, erases the differences for women that's different. Every woman is different from another. And uh, in, in fact, there are a lot of magazines that show us how to make up, how to dress, but there is a model of be feminine. But every uh, woman is singular and so. Is enigmatic. This is what Freud said in 1905 when his special theory said that male sexuality is accessible, on the contrary, female uh, sexuality isn't. And this is a central point. In his studies, uh, Freud didn't succeed in uh, highlighting, in uh, understanding the sexuality of women. And after 20 years, he cited the problem of the analysis uh, in another book. Uh, he uh, said, that, said that the sexuality of a woman is a dark continent. And in Maria Bonaparte, in Maria Bonaparte, the real problem uh, was related to her sexuality and uh, related to her. The most alarming and difficult question to answer is what women want. So, stopping from this enigma. Uh, of aspect of man, this uh, provokes a sort of a fascination and a sort of um, terrifying um, reaction in man. How can a man avoid this? For well, up to 1968, it's a violence. Uh, was translated into a patriarchal uh, five minutes, please. Okay, a patriarchal that is a sort of taming femininity, hooding femininity, hooding femininity. And um, the the only way was so to um, create a woman who was a mother. In the patriarchal culture, uh, a mother, a woman should be mother. And so uh, doing, she was not um, enigmatic anymore. And Duman, as a mother, becomes so a known figure because she's a mother. We have assisted in the past years, up to now, to the crucifixion of the woman. And the lack of freedom of speech in her, she was a sort of a property. And today, we assist 
to this uh, sort of a human as a property. And uh, this is part of our past culture. And uh, this is why violence so is framed on this aspect. I, I have the right to destroy the femininity, it may be uh, said. And uh, a woman cannot go beyond and must belong to a man. And it is a sort of object. The woman is an object. Master Don Gesualdo in Berga, in fact, considered the woman as a staff, a part of the staff. Men needs uh, um, a woman to um, receive a pleasure from a sexual point of view. Sometimes, uh, when a, a woman speaks of um, speaks of uh, the problems of his uh, son, of her son, a teenager, sometimes. Uh, um, a woman says, I have the two children. One is my um, my boy, the other is uh, my husband. Because she uh, sometimes addresses to the, to the man as uh, an immature. So in this case, we can use the concept of a male ghost. And... Uh, The fact that, um, for example, there is a sort of a getting rid of the heteros by considering women beaches, slots. And so doing, there is a sort of a property exerted on women. This is why, for example, uh, some violent acts and with uh, scarring, with acid, to stab, with the stabbing, this is a toxic love, a synonym of a possess woman. Some years ago, um, Massimo Recalcati uh, listened to some poems, and at a certain point, uh, one of the prisoners, in, in a prison, of course, one of the prisoners uh, read a poem, a very strong poem on love. And uh, Recalcati asked, wondered, uh, what kind of a crime did he commit? He had uh, broken his uh, um, for absolute love. It's a crime, absolute crime is a crime. And uh, his poem uh, is uh, authentic and is uh, linked to a sick love. When we love, we possess the other in a sick love. And uh, there is anguish, jealousy. Delirium of jealousy um, linked to the fact that we um, are afraid that someone can uh, replace ourselves. Uh, I quote uh, Amar de Molière Don Juan is obsessed uh, by women, he doesn't love anyone. And even the Amar. Uh, when he has to choose between Marianne, he chooses uh, his safe mode because Marianne is a loss, a loss. It better have, he had better have so connect uh, in the midst of the woman. In the society which I live, a lot of women 
uh, had difficulties in finding a woman in a building uh, like among the like uh, because it's very difficult to create a solid relationship Um, in a second time, I will speak about this, and I conclude by saying that violence has a different status if compared to the violence uh, of women in co compared to uh, men. It, um, the female, the male violence is. Uh, is very terrific and uh, it leads very uh, deep furrows in men. There are so many men unable to love and unable to install solid relations being narcissist Peter Pan. Okay, Pino, uh, yes, the speaker has contributed in giving the leading ideas and now Terrari Carlo will contribute um, from a analytical point of view and uh, he will give us uh, basic ideas of our recent situation. Okay. Thank you. It's a very interesting to debate and to speak about this important topic. And taking into consideration the question and a specific so some sociologists the contributions are essential and important and we can wonder um, what is the uh, sociology of a violence this is very important might be to find out the conclusions and find uh, what is the psychoanalysis of violence. The psychoanalysis of violence detects different uh, points. The psychoanalysis of violence is Freudian theory of violence that is the one that today tonight has emerged has emerged uh, Maria Laura and uh, and Eva have uh, introduced this uh, and even Lacan, psychoanalysis is important to this effect. And even a psychology of a violence should be taken into consideration. A philosophy, a psychology of a violence, a, a, a right of a violence should be taken into The law of a violence. And eighteen seven years old is a different and 
is on Twitter to get the data. But that data is what is important is to do something. And so we are all involved in understanding both. about the data and the violence. Voilà. That goes What is so the mean violence? We mustn't deny, but we must say and wonder if all rapers are male are women are men and not women mm. it's hard to admit that that's some men have written that Men have raped women, and we wonder what is the source that should be treated. At the first, we have to say one of the uh, first violent. Uh, mm, Acts of the killing of parricide, maticide, right? Um, had um, walked on that are almost impossible. Was important in order to detect he affronté, c'est à dire that he has raised the patriarchal, the patriarchal culture. We should try to understand the origin of this culture and so we understand the origin of. I'd like to quote the public of Plato and quote the main event. The man would be unpredictable in the duplex, the double man. What does he do? If, uh, what would he do if we didn't uh, look at him? In the Republic, this is the question. What does he do? He resisted and rapes the queen. It's a rape. If compared with the modern society, um, it is a rape. A rape. Um, So we have this uh, storytelling. Um, 
the king uh, wanted to show the beauty of his life in uh, this pastoral uh, setting. And uh, today it said that you have seen uh, me, the queen says, so now you have to kill the king. And so I will be your queen. This is uh, so a uh, counting of the myth. It's obvious. Each case is obviously different. Is not a norm. Is not a. Is only a concept. Take into consideration this uh, uh, this myth and interpret it in, a, in a, uh, under um, um, so under a personal point of view, trying to understand who kills and why. Needs should be so detected. And uh, trying to understand who kills, who rapes, who really rapes, on the symbolic point of view, metaphorical point of view, Eva um, showed us some elements, important elements in her speech, trying to analyze the sexual implications. On the psychoanality, Sanayakalsi point of view and of the uh, so uh, the fact that uh, femininity is denied, is denied according to a patriarchal system Of course, according to the experience, the envy of many, it is something related to, um, to all this, the envy of the many. Quote Aristotle. I I will try to be here so uh, shorter. And what I'm going to say and to quote and everything that is uh, expl was explained in simple words today, of course, is it in front of uh, various. Uh, a differentiated uh, uh, audience. What uh, I'd like now to notice the can, the stadium of the uh, stage of the mirror. In the meantime, in the essay. In the essays of a thirty-eight to thirty-six, Lacan introduced the complex of the uh, of the unknown and the fratricide.
when we have to face the myth of violence, we, uh, of course, can we say to the Bible, to the basic uh, books, and um, should we say to the family? In a family household, most of the homicides take place. Uh, remember the habit for rapes and the same impossible mission. This is so. It doesn't mean that is so a luck, but it's a way. Sometimes I happened to uh, be in front of a community of a Romanian and uh, And in, in, in Verona, there were married who decided to sell or buy women in Thailand for the same thing. And this is a common case. Um, it happens, in fact, to discover such realities. This is a way. For example, the, the, the woman who sells her body for intercourse with men. This is right. Even the man who looks for the most beautiful one, for example, the history of the myth of Helena. Medelau, for example, and Patroclo and so on. Uh, so uh, a war broke out for the beauty of a woman. So this um, society um, depends. So uh, new reading. Oh, this is very important, and the myth gives us hints to understand violence today and prevent. I have read a lot of books on the basis of violence. Development of the and the relationship proposed that the solution against gender-based violence, the solution, the hint, the suggestion, is a sort of solution. So, only the solution is assuming the role we may say the role, but that's not right. The role is not correct because the role doesn't exist. The real teaching is, is this is your role? No. But what are the conditions of your life? Where you come from? Where you are going to? And so, Stefano, role, the image, sexual imaginary serves a conflict in the relationship in society, and this adult service is, is important.
it's a sort of ideology whose basic thought is not attributing role roles is not politically correct psychologically correct is not so socially correct is uh, what is not accepted you should conclude the story so sorry um, this is a thought to compare that should be accepted but is not accepted thank you and so we use these words to conclude and uh, to open new questions thank you for having taken part in this important meeting thank you pinarotta for having organized this uh, webinar and um, Mm. So let's think of a different uh, interpretation of these different points. Thank you, Eva, Gerage, Maria Laura Folduto, Formino Formica, and uh, all those who um, have so, taken part in uh, this webinar. And, uh, so good. Bye and uh, see you next time at another session of a webinar.